Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to do a deep dive into the software that arrives with your BeeStation personal cloud device. This is Synology's new entry level incredibly idiot proof easy, easy user friendly NAS solution and Although we know a lot more about the hardware, it is the software that a number of us have wondered about. In this video, I'm going to be going through the desktop client application. I'm going to be going through the web GUI, how to access the device, what I like, what I don't like. Then I'm going to be dipping into some of the mobile applications, B files and B, uh, B photos. On top of that, I'm going to be going into the web based GUI and going through a number of the options. And hopefully by the end of this video, if you've got any questions about BSM or B Station Manager, they'll be covered in today's video also along the bottom of the screen it should be chapterized if there's a specific area that you want to focus on for your setup before you go ahead and lay down a bit of the old wonga for this device hopefully this video will cover that and those chapters will take you straight to it but the first thing i'm going to do is remove myself here from camera because we have got a lot to cover throughout this video first things first when you're accessing or even setting up the device for the first time you are going to need to go to be uh, portal.bsynology.com from there you'll go Go ahead and click the sign in option there and this is where you will need to create that Synology account and I know there's going to be some users not in love with this because unlike a lot of other Synology now solutions where you can you know set it up on the LAN the local area network and you never need to create a Synology account because as far as you're concerned I've paid them some money what more do they want from me um, the Synology account is free it's predominantly used to access your personal cloud system here, the B station, remotely over the internet. Now, that's always been the case with any Synology NAS. There's no subscription model. It is just an online access point so you can use their servers to access your personal cloud. However, I think there are users that are going to not really like the fact they've got to create an account with this device. You don't have to keep using it, and you can, later on down the line, use it over the Ethernet, over the local area network, although there is something of a bump on that I'll touch on later on. I think there are some users that are not going to like using an online account to access the device. But once you've done that, you set up the device. It takes around two to three minutes tops. We've covered that in another video. And this is what you see when you want to access the portal there. And if you've got multiple B stations and no doubt Synology are going to be rolling out alternative versions of this device, this is where you would find it. And from here, you've got several different options. Obviously, there at the top, you can manage all your different devices that you may have. And here, you'll be able to access the B files or uh, the B photos tabs there, but also you in each of those you can download those mobile applications. So let's start with the system settings. So if you wanted to find out more about your system, go ahead and go into the system settings there. From the system settings area, as you can see here on screen, arguably, and let's zoom in a little bit there, compared with something like Synology DSM, and again, maybe we should get a Synology NAS booted up here in the background for comparison. Um, I'll get that for later on in the video. It's arguably a lot more streamlined and simplified compared to that of Synology's DSM platform there. I'll also argue again, as you can see at the top, I am connecting to this device remotely over the internet. I'm using a secure connection there, and ultimately it means that any of that transfer of data is still going to be encrypted outside of my box um, uh, between me and this destination device there. Now, as you can see, it defines just how much storage has been used by different things. Um, on the user spectrum here, we've got my original user. Again, there's my email. Again, you can ping me an email if you need any help. But on top of that, you can invite other users. You can, act, you can add up to eight individual users. But once again, each of those users is going to need to create an account as well. And you can send that directly from the device or via email. Again, once a user is invited, as you can see there, it does allow them, you, they have a time frame or you can rescind that invitation if you want and change some of those parameters if you like. But again, the amount of access they have seemingly seems not dissimilar to your own. Um, now, if we go into the system settings there, we can find out more about it. And again, pretty much everything you're going to need to know, there's our uh, 3.48 TB of storage. It's a 4 TB Synology hard drive. It's either an HAT 3300 or a 3310 drive there. If it's a 3300, that is based on a Seagate drive, and it is the 3310. It looks like those are Toshiba drives, something we're going to be talking about soon in another video. But all fairly standard stuff there. Don't worry, I'm going to be resetting this device after this video so don't worry too much about those parameters there uh, moving forward you've also got uh, restoration options here and again f you know credit to uh, Synology with this rather basic level device 
for a basic device, the majority of basic systems I've ever talked about online, very few of them ever have um, a system-wide backup option there. Um, back up to a USB or back it up to the Synology C2 cloud. For those that aren't aware, Synology C2 is their own cloud platform there. And although later on you'll see this in video, there are areas that you can back up to third-party cloud services. When it comes to backing up the system-wide, that unfortunately it's only limited to c2 there and again if you do go ahead with that backup there um and if you edit that backup there is actually an option to encrypt that i didn't encrypt the backup but you can action that as an encrypted backup if you so choose and again restoration of those backups still requires you to either utilize the existing usb backup or others you can see the options there updating the system by default it will update itself regularly automatically but of course, as you can see, there is a new update here available and it hasn't updated it because of the time frame there. Now I'll be updating that later on. But as you can see, the date today is the 2nd of Feb. This system arrives um, in the first week of March. So don't be surprised if this pre-release firmware that I'm running on here sees numerous updates and changes throughout that time. But again, you can find out more information in the notes about what exactly is included on the release notes of every individual update there. Again, why that's not downloaded that update automatically kind of surprises me there. I know it's only a sub revision there, but given I've said I want the updates automatic, it's kind of surprising that hasn't automatically kicked in there. Uh, now, this is where we start to come to the tail end. And as you can see, we've got the notification settings. So if, for example, your uh, B station is powered down, um, you know, out of the blue, if you've got certain erroneous accent or behavior, uh, a lot of this will come through your Synology account, I will add. Um, but overall, accessing the device <coughs> uh, for notifications is set up fairly automatically there. Synology's technical support here will allow uh, them to ascertain and get uh, remote access support. It creates a remote access Key. when you activate remote access there i will i will add as well that during the early setup of this device when the system arrived with me because i didn't have access to the latest firmware during my initial reviews i wasn't able to do some of the stuff this system was said it was able to do that was because i had the system way before launch but luckily this remote access feature did allow them to jump in and take care of that but again they can't access it until you give them the unique key that is generated here so this isn't an open door policy for them now the final tab here regarding local access is one that i've kind of got a bit of a beef with i've mentioned this in other videos i don't like the local area network lan is disabled by default i find it quite limiting but at least you've got the option to turn it on, but I do still feel that having the system only be internet um, accessible at the beginning and to set up over the internet and have to manually access LAN, there's going to be a lot of users that aren't going to activate LAN on this system. And in the event of an internet outage, that could be problematic there. The same goes for using the SMB service to use local area access to mount you know, network drives to this. And again, we'll talk about this more later on, but there is a local client app that you can use on your Windows or Mac machine that allows you to do quite a great deal and you know remote set up the device so you can natively access the contents of this system but moreover be able to use that client app to access the device remotely but not have to use the graphical user interface over here so for example when we look at it here if we look inside this multimedia folder here and I right click, much like Synology Drive, as you can see, there's 54.2 gigabytes of data on the Synology B drive, but it's taking up no space on my local PC. And if I go into these files and folders, and say, for example, in the photos, and I want this album, all I have to do is right click, go to B station, and then I can always, always keep a copy of this on my local computer, create, create a shareable link to that for sharing with others, or, if it is already on my local system, remove the space. Again, just like Synology Drive. So that client application is pretty darn good and I like that it, how well it works. I like that it just does what it says it will do. I like the configuration options. I like you can choose for the different config. Again, I am on a limited private network here, so that's why we haven't got direct access here. But still nonetheless, it's a decent little client tool. And again, the Mac version of this is near enough identical, I'm sure. I've not had a chance to test that out. And I believe that should be up and available at launch as well. But that still doesn't, for me, um, kind of detract from the fact that lacking local area network access is going to be problematic for those 
users that want that high density speed. Right now, I'm at the limits of my internet connection. I'm using, you know, a tunneled VPN here. So if I go for a speed test in Google here and I run that speed test, you know, I'm using a tunneled VPN. It's still pretty good speeds for a tunneled VPN, but nevertheless, my, you know, the NAS itself is in a much higher uh, upload download speed location right now. And right now, when I look at, you know, not having local area access, if I was in the building that this system is in, rather than using remote access, you know, I would want LAN. Moreover, if I'd lost internet connectivity, the idea that I'm in the same room as the device, but I still can't access it, is going to be annoying. And for those that are wondering, if you use Synology Assistant and try to scan the local area network, the system will appear, but it will still prioritize the remote access point there. Again, if you're looking for something incredibly user-friendly with streamlined experiences and not over-complicating things, this is a great GUI for the system settings. But what about going into file management? Now, as you might expect, the bfiles application is incredibly user-friendly, much like the entire remit of this entire device. As you can see, accessing it via the web portal there, but of course, if you choose to, you can go ahead and access the mobile application or that desktop client tool that I mentioned earlier on. Alternatively, right now, because this is pre-launch, the official downloads are not publicly available. If you go to the Synology download utility pages here, you can find the B drive, the B station, and the B drive, of course, is that external little SSD drive that we talked about midway through 2023. But I would say right now, B files, although we are still accessing a single hard drive and a single 500, uh, 5400 RPM hard drive, it's moderately responsive. But I will say if you are engaging in heavy read write operations on the drive, or even casual upload from a USB that revolve around a lot of heavy write onto the drive, do not be surprised if the system starts slowing down. It will warn you when this is happening, fair play to Synology for at least acknowledging this, but again, you are using a system that is running on a single old school hard drive that means multiple input output, you know, forget IOPS, just simultaneous access to the drive is going to be limited. But Focusing on file stations here again, creating new folders really, really easy. Uploading data really is. If we upload a folder to this device and we go ahead and use one of my folders here from uh, some stuff that I've recorded, so we'll go for my idiot's drive to USB, we'll go for something that's got some photos in it. So we go for this uGreen folder here and we upgrade, upload the uGreen folder, we can see 86 files will be updated, to, uploaded to this device. But if we go ahead and upload individual files and folders, again, lovely straightforward stuff there and we can just bulk select a big pile of photos and images there select them boom and it will upload them directly to the system nice and straightforward directly into the catalogs and folders there when it comes to accessing them i will say if we go to the multimedia collection this is the usual plex stuff that i go for accessing photos videos music all fairly good we can go into it there going to say this album here select a random photo again this file we can go in go and find out more information about it. But what I will say is again, because we're accessing a single hard drive and we're accessing a hard drive, you know, 5400 RPM domestic level, I would say thumbnail generation on this device isn't fantastic. I would say also indexing is nowhere near as responsive as say multiple drives would have been in a RAID configuration there. The lag that's caused by, you know, a single hard drive trying to do all of this with the indexing, it just sometimes feels less optimized than it should be. So, for example, if we look at an image here and get that opened up, this is a much smaller image than one we just tried to open up earlier on, but it's still not that much smaller. And although we're able to access it, and again, can you tell that was for children? Um, maybe. Uh, from there, again, if there is scrapable background metadata, I'm not sure we've got any metadata in these, some of it is accessible, but crucially, not all of it is accessible in a way that I think Synology Photos does. But again, I think it will be much better to kind of dig more into that later on when we look at the photo applications. But when we come out of the multimedia collection there, and this time going to something like music, we can go ahead and try and play some music from here. So if we go for the original Home Alone soundtrack, and again, I'm going to have to make sure we've got this muted because of YouTube, double click, and at least you can play that within the browser window. That's quite good. Again, limited. It should, shouldn't be that impressed by something that basic, but at the very least, if you have got cloud access data, at least I'm able to access that. But crucially, 
when you look at files like this, we find information about that one. That's an even bigger file than those photos that we were looking at. And this is still able to play that file immediately. So there's definitely something about that metadata scraping. Um, or at the very least the thumbnail generation of course that is something of a problem if we go into video files we can have a little look and we'll go into uh, movie files here and we'll go for a little shop of horrors and we play that file this will play within the web browser we can go ahead and play that there i'm gonna have to be careful obviously because of youtube what i show but as you can see that's a 1.4 gigabyte file there that i'm now streaming remotely can i play it it looks like it's playing we're going to see the circular logo this is something that is playing there so Again, why it wasn't able to load those photos, I'm not so sure. But again, they do have an optimized, dedicated photo application for that. So I'm going to hold off a little bit of that criticism ever so slightly there. But if we go back into the files and folders, the controls that you have there from the files. So if we go into the main multimedia collection archive there, again, you've got search functionality there at the top. And you've got an advanced search feature built in if you choose to. Again, actions that are happening, whether it is backups or otherwise, will be uh, detailed there at the top right. And of course, once again, there's our old friend, the B station is busy. Get used to seeing that. Um, again, if you need to use the applications or download some of the client apps, you can get those client apps still from the top right. On the left-hand side of the screen there, if we zoom in a wee bit, um, we've got a few extra options. Synchronized computers, as you can see, the synchronization of my local PC isn't right now established with this one. Uh, but again, this is where you would find those different computers and how you manage those files and folders. More on that in a follow-up video where we're going to get several PCs backing up to this system. Now, cloud services, I touched on this in the before you buy video, but you can add connections with third party cloud providers. I wish that option was still afforded in the backup and restore area that we saw earlier on, but still, it's nice to be able to bolt on those cloud services there. And again, we've already got one established connection there. And, you know, you can pick and choose when you're connecting to it, which files and folders locally and on the cloud you want to have in either direction. But again, you have to re-establish those connections. If I re-establish that connection from earlier, we're able to create a brand new uh, synchronized connection between these two. We'll go ahead, even though we've established a connection between these two cloud services already, but as you can see, you can't reuse an existing one. But you can go ahead and choose individual files and folders for that. Next up, USB backups. So again, you can create a USB backup via one of the two connected USB devices on this system. And again, you can choose which direction you want them to go into on the local system versus that on the USB system as well. If you've got different USBs like I've got there, you can do that as well as actioning an automatic backup if needed as well. Again, Nice stuff there, all fairly rudimentary, but I think for a lot of basic storage users, that is going to be appealing. The same goes for seeing those external USB connected drives. Again, that's one USB drive that I've created a partition in, hence why you're seeing two. And again, you can browse those pretty much like any other USB quite easily there. Access, you know, recent files, all fairly standard stuff there. And again, accessible and nice during the web browser. But what about the mobile application? The B Files application for mobile, Android is what we'll be using today, is actually pretty much everything you're ever really going to need when it comes to browsing the contents of your B Station NAS from the comfort of your mobile, on the train, on holiday, or even for the comfort of your home. Straight away, you can access the full breakdown of files and folders just as you would expect. And also, if you have synchronized different computers, they can be accessed via the available tab there. Now, um, when it comes to accessing individual files and folders, so for example, we can go ahead and play multimedia if we choose directly via this interface but again we are at the behest of the internet connection we are utilizing at least until you've enabled that local area network access there more on top of that if we move forward if we go ahead any individual starred or favorited stuff can be of course accessed very easily via the app and any shared files or folders with other users on the system as well as share links you created from within the interface can all be managed so for example this image here of a device that we uploaded earlier on we can go ahead and if we choose to, go ahead and either download it. We can add that star there to make sure we know it's a favorited area. If we choose, we can make sure we've got offline access. So that will download access to that. Alternatively, we can choose whether we want to share it with the same password access as well as date expiry if we choose to. And that's not just limited to users we've added to those eight. This is for anyone that's got that link, if you choose to, with the right security parameters there. On top of that, while we go through the files and folders, we can, if we choose to, choose what we're backing up locally. 
If we've connected a USB drive, boom, those external drives will be visible and accessible via your mobile device here remotely, even though they could be anywhere in the world. Same goes if you want to action those USB backups we mentioned earlier on, that can all be done from this mobile interface, right the way down to those cloud access services as well. Although I will add, there doesn't seem to be the means to add further cloud services from the mobile app, and the majority of that seems to be done via the desktop interface. We can find out more about that storage capacity if we choose and configure some of those file options and how much of that is controllable and how much of that differs towards just cache management and how much is being accessed here locally is up for debate because the mobile app does have elements of control but not total control as you would expect from the desktop interface there. It's a simple application that either allows you to control or send files and photos to the system if you choose to. Not just limited to multimedia either, but you can pretty much send anything you like from that mobile device in an ad hoc fashion. So, you know, it does its job. I'm not going to suggest that it's the most exciting application, but if what you want is file folder access to what's on the NAS, as well as be able to synchronize or manually upload download data from your mobile device, this app does the job. Digging into B photos can be broken down into two areas. We can look at the B photos graphical user interface here via the web browser and of course the mobile. So let's start with the desktop first. Straight away, we can see a lot of these images here. Clearly we're getting better load for the indexing and a lot of the thumbnail generation within this app than we saw earlier on when using B um, B files. Now if we take an average photo here, we'll go for a picture of my cat here, we can find out more information about this. So for example, we can find out a little bit more tailored information about the device that took the photo, and if there is metadata to scrape, some of it will be obtained. On top of that, we can go ahead and if there is motion, such as uh, live photos for iOS and Android as well, some of that information can be garnered there. All of it kind of dug through nice and easily. And again, shareable links can be created at any time from within that remote web user interface there, either with people that have got the link, password protection, or expiry dates can be applied to those shares. So it's not just users that have access to the system. You can actually externally share links via an encrypted tunnel for all of these images. Moreover, from that, you can go ahead and quite, uh, apply quick filters here on the right hand side of the screen that allow you to kind of create sub albums if you choose or just to dig through so for example if you want photos where it has specifically two people in one photo and we'll get onto ai photo recognition later it can dig through and find them it doesn't look like there's any photos of me and jason there and again it scrapes a lot of that metadata found in those photos to create a lot of these filters which then allows you to dig through these quite well and again a lot of these photos have been uploaded either directly uh, thanks to me connecting a usb drive directly to the system or uploading directly from a laptop but another thing you can do and something that i really 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 wish synology would integrate into their synology photos platform is you can copy from b files so rather than uploading files directly into this and upload them from your computer or from your mobile what you can do is copy from b files and now you can actually access the files and folders on the uh, B station device that are in general file access and then copy them over to the photo area. Now, as good as that sounds, I will highlight a few downfalls of this. I'm glad to see it as a feature, and these are all the files and folders that are on the B station system, but one, the idea of copying them and therefore creating duplicates of my photos is super annoying. Secondly, I can't multiple select. So, for example, I can't just copy one of these albums. I can't co copy the whole album. Also, there's no select all functionality either. I have to manually collect each of them. If I control A, it does nothing. There's no means for me to do this in a quick way. So as good as this feature is to be able to copy files from my B files area onto the photos, I really do not like that one, it's going to create duplicates, and two, that I can't do them en masse. Perhaps this is something that will change later in further updates of BSM and B Station, but still, nonetheless, it would have been nice to have those early doors. Now, if we could dig into the album section, this is where some of that AI photo recognition kicks in here. So, for example, if you go into the People's tab, it has been crawling through the photos that I have uploaded, either from my phone or the USB that I've connected, and it's found lots of faces. Then you can go ahead, for example, this chap here, this is Chris. We can go ahead and put Chris there, and that's it. Boom. Now, whenever photos of Chris arrive, it will add them to the pile. But, of course... Some photos are going to look slightly different. Maybe he's wearing a hat. Maybe he's wearing a face mask. There's lots of reasons and angles why that might be. Here's another collection of photos of Chris. So I can just go ahead, 
find Chris just by typing the letter C and then merge those two albums. Again, this is not new. This is something that existed in Synology Photos for a while, but nevertheless, it's good to have it. And this allows, if possible, to find photos of the same people that are in the same photos. So if we look at these photos here. There's some photos of me in there. So let's see if any of the photos that have been tagged of me, if we merge a few more together, as it finds different photos of me, some with sunglasses, some wearing hats, merge them together and then at the top what we can do is type in uh, photos of people so in this case Robbie find Robbie but then we can also find photos of Robbie and Chris have those merged together and see if it can find these two together photos that have got these two at the moment it looks like that's not a feature that's supported but it did find it so Ultimately, it does work. Ignore that previous statement. It seems to do it. It just takes a little bit more time to do it. How much of that is to do with the internet connection? How much of that is to do with utilizing a hard drive and therefore the input outputs are limited simultaneously? But still, nonetheless, it's good to have that feature. The same goes for su subject recognition, something that was missing from Synology Photos, even though it was in Synology Moments for a long time. The idea that it can categorize a lot of these photos. I wish there was more differentiation. So, for example, when I click food here, what would be nice is if these broken down into subcategories, something that Google Photos and indeed QNAP's own photo application does, where if you click drinks or food, it actually breaks it down into types of food, types of drinks. Perhaps this is something that will be added later, but it's currently not available at launch. Same goes with places. Either with identification of places or more likely the geotagging uh, that is located in a lot of the photo metadata is crawled and allows you to create a breakdown of locations of these photos. I wish there was the map mode uh, available uh, in Synology Photo Station a while back and that's been integrated in other photo apps, but still nonetheless, good to have it there in this $199 device. Again, any shares you create will be filtered there. And ultimately, as far as the desktop application goes, it's all fairly straightforward. But what about the mobile app? Now, be photos accessible from, again, iOS or Android, we are using Android for this testing, as mentioned earlier on, is not quite as responsive as that of B files, at least on the Android application. A lot of that is, of course, to do with that thumbnail generation and indexing we mentioned earlier on. But <clears throat> I will say that the photos do, you know, load up quite well, and they're clearly when it comes to optimization of those thumbnails on the mobile platform, a lot of that is going to come down to the amount of caching that's going to be happening on the local side versus that of the desktop side. But photos is something people are going to take very, very seriously on a device like this as they move away <clears throat> from the likes of iCloud and Google Drive and Google Photos onto their own cloud system. As you can see, if you choose to, you can go ahead and change backing up to happen, whether it's only Wi-Fi or whether you want to utilize some of your cellular data, whether you want to to use new photos, old photos, choose whether you want to delete photos that are on your existing system to you know make room on it. Now you've sent them to the NAS, uh, the B station, but bear in mind by doing that, there's every possibility that you are eliminating a real backup there. So don't play fast and loose with deleting photos from your phone just because they're on the B station, because then they're not a backup, are they? But you can change the directory that uh, serves as the backup source for this app. So you don't necessarily have to use just the pre-made fol uh, the folder that your uh, phone client device utilizes. And on top of that, it's you know pretty much what you'd expect in terms of configuration there in the background. When it comes to actually browsing the photos, it's you know fairly serviceable there we are still accessing photos either locally on the system in some cases or remotely on the nas and i think that's going to be the main difference here if you're accessing photos on the nas that you've deleted from the device there is an argument that the caching there is going to be very different indeed so for example i know for a fact that the the photos here from 2024 are not on this phone all of these are photos that are on the nas and if we want to access one of these such as that photo there of food what i'm seeing here is a low res thumbnail that i can't even zoom into at the moment because we're still accessing that low res version but if we download we can download that photo locally to our device and enjoy that full size photo we can also access a lot of the background information on it if there is stored metadata unfortunately there's none there 
We can also share that file. So even if that file, let's go for another one here. This time we'll go for a photo here of uh, Handy Little McDonald's. We can go ahead, find out more information about it, but also share that file, even though it's not on our local device here. As you can see at the top, we've got the notification of that file being downloaded there. Ultimately, it's pretty much what you're going to want for low level, but also very convenient file photo access here on the system. On top of that, while it generates the thumbnails there, we can look at the AI photo recognition. We've already talked about it on the desktop and you'll be pleased to see that all of the facial recognition and the naming carries over quite neatly. Same goes for the subject recognition, of course, moving into the places and more. And the map feature actually works here on the mobile device in a way that it wasn't accessible on the desktop, which really annoys me because I like the idea of having that. And I don't know whether it's a, it's a Google API limitation. I'm not sure. But the fact that I can't have that on the desktop and presumably my phone is allowing pass-through for that Google API to be utilized, it's still kind of annoying there. Sharing those photos and managing those shares, just like we saw on the desktop, is indeed possible. And overall, <clears throat> although this is very, very similar to what we've seen before in the Synology Photos application, it's still pretty darn good. And <clears throat> way more responsive, I might add, than what we saw on the desktop there, having to do a lot of the legwork. Overall, I like what I'm seeing here. And although it's limited compared to other photo applications out there, so for example, there's no editing suite included, and there's light up you know filters you can apply using your first party photo app it's still pretty darn good just bear in mind again that this is something that's limited to photos and very small amount of video utilization as well if they are backed up to the system but again then we're going down that road of thumbnail generation and a lot of that indexing there in the background so comparing Synology's Disk Station Manager, the long-running DSM platform that's been around for, you know, 15 to 20 years now at the very least, with B Station or BSM here on the left, obviously there is just more capabilities in DSM. That is the whole reason BSM exists, to make things a lot more straightforward. But when you compare both user interfaces, the one on the right there with DSM, like a whole system desktop interface, a graphical user interface comparable to that of an operating system, it does kind of throw shade at BSM. And if you're looking for, you know, more configuration, more options, obviously DSM has got more going for you. Even when you do a light dig into the system configuration of both what you can do with regards to shared folders, managing the file services, indexing and more, you have more control with DSM. But that arrives with a greater degree of you know, work a little bit more understanding and a steeper learning curve. DSM is still one of the most user-friendly platforms in the market, but there's no avoiding that DSM does arrive with its own headaches and that stuff you're going to have to learn of networking and storage as you go forward. But things that I wish were available are things like the resource monitor. A lot of the time when I've been using BSM on the B Station system, there's been times when the system is hanging. And yes, I'm accessing uh, BSM via the internet and I'm using a local area network connection to get into DSM. Remember, you have to enable that remote, uh, the local area network access on BSM in a way that is by default on DSM. But still, nonetheless, there's just times when BSM just seems to hang because it's running from that single hard drive, whereas DSM just is just a lot more optimized. A lot more work has gone into it there. And of course, we can't overlook the fact that we're running a system here that's got four bays of storage and having multiple drives being read from, in this case, three drives, does increase that performance of, you know, simultaneous read and write at any given time. Now, when we look at what both offer, yes, it's a simplified user interface here on B Station. And if you want simplification, it certainly is good for you. But comparing them both side by side, there's no avoiding that sometimes the B Station platform there, if you want to know, for example, how much resources are being used, you're not going to have that option there. If you want to create specifically shared folders and tailor a lot of that access utilizing, you know, user account control, the options just aren't there in a way they are in DSM. Again, if you're not going to use those features, it doesn't matter. But I'm someone that's been using DSM for a long time, and it's very hard for me to look at this with fresh eyes. And I'm sure it looks a lot more complicated on the right-hand side of the screen than the left. But those complications are there for you to create a far more tailored and useful experience. Case in point, the shared folders system. The idea that if I create a shared folder here, 
I can take advantage of things like that write once read many. And although encryption on those storage areas is possible, again, if we go into the uh, B files area to create a lot of those storage to, you know, to share across those different users and create those shareable links when needed, you know, those options are there, it still feels a lot more limited. Um, what BStation feels like is all of the individual apps that make up DSM. So, for example, when we look at B files, it's inevitable that what we can really make a comparison with is Synology Drive. They're ultimately the same thing. It's just slightly more of an updated user interface. B photos, as good as that is, with AI photo recognition and sharing links and creating tailored access when needed to internal and external individuals to share our data, as good as that all sounds, it really is just the same interface that we've seen before in Synology Photos. What BStation does is repackage a lot of this into a far more simplified user interface. And as good as that is for beginners, and it really, really is, I can't stress that enough, if you've heard lots of good things about Synology, just know that BStation is a streamlined, stripped-down version of that to keep things simple. And a lot of those key apps and features, such as, you know, to name but a few, all of these applications in the App Center are just not going to be available there on the BStation system. Overall, BStation and the BSM software, if you're looking for something simple, something entry level, and you don't really want to learn about networking or storage, there's a lot to love here. You know, the automated uh, photo AI stuff there, that's pretty darn good then. If you're someone moving away from Google Drive, Dropbox, and iCloud, or the like, there's a lot here that is comparable to what you already have. There's your client tools for mobile and desktop. There's web browser access there. And... Although I do hope that BStation is going to improve in terms of, you know, a one, a background optimization there when it comes to photo indexing and the, um, uh, the thumbnail generation. But on top of that, larger systems that have got better storage media because DSM, sorry, uh, BSM, I should say, does feel like it's being hampered by that single drive and being you know, regularly taunted by B station is busy when I'm accessing a system remotely over the internet is going to be bothersome. Now, the fact that local area network access isn't available straight out the box and I have to enable it manually, I'm not a big fan of. And indeed, when I did further exploring, I found on Synology's own website, they did detail, you know, if people did ask about that, about actor accessing the device without an internet connection, they did go out of their way to highlight that you can enable it after setup. But even now, currently using mobile applications, you still need an internet connection for those mobile apps. And I know that's not going to be for everyone. Ultimately, for the target audience that wants to move away from the cloud for $199 and 4 TB of storage and all of these range of apps and services, there's a lot to love here. But just know that you are getting an entry-level device. Now, it's the start of 2024 right now. It's, what, Feb 2nd? Right now, I, this is going to be the first entry by Synology into a larger series because it looks more and more like they're retiring the J series of boxes. With that in mind, chances are this is going to be an evolving platform. There's going to be a two and a four bay version and almost certainly BStation will improve with new features rolled over from Synology DSM, no doubt, uh, such as Video Station or other multimedia stuff, but also synchronization with things like Synology DSM, synchronization with that original B drive right now at launch though it does feel ever so slightly incomplete but i'm only looking at that from a dsm perspective you as a burgeoning potential new synology buyer who was worried about the platform being over complicated you're going to have a different opinion and i'm sure what you've seen today is going to be a very robust storage experience with a multi-layer backup strategy built in there for usb to cloud and some interesting apps and services and again 199 dollars is very hard to fault that to get the 4tb for a lifetime product there but let me know what you guys think we've already done the before you buy we're going to be doing the larger review at the end of the month i'd love to hear what you guys have thought of the software today do let me know in the comments below but otherwise thank you so much for watching there's links to the other resources the written articles and videos below as well as links to get hold of this device at different retailers and if you were going to go to those retailers anyway using those links means it supports what me and eddie do at nas compares it's just us other than that if you need more help free advice section on the side of every page at nas compares or the ko-fi or coffee patreon or zoom consultations are always available online but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time